How's it going guys, how are you doing? And welcome to a brand new video tutorial from iPros. Today we're gonna discuss about the best React design patterns. So if you have heard or never heard about design patterns before, today we're gonna explain what is a design pattern and how it's gonna make your life as a web developer or more specifically as a React developer much, much better. So we're gonna just dive into design patterns how design patterns actually works and what are the best practices behind design patterns specifically for react and of course the best practices for writing better components and for sure writing better code much more easier to understand performing code and for sure uh, readable code so we're gonna talk all of that about how you can use uh, the design patterns and what are the best design patterns available for the react community right over there so first things first, for those of you who doesn't know what is a design pattern or doesn't recognize exactly what I mean by a design pattern. So what is a design pattern? A design pattern basically is a general repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem in software design. So if you have like a problem that always or that much of developers always occurs and have this issue. So the best way to go through that problem is actually creating a design pattern that solves this issue. And this design pattern, of course, is going to be repeatedly used by uh, all the developers in, in like for solving that specific problem. And for sure, the design pattern is going to be much, much more uh, efficient, optimized it, and of course easy to use and to understand and very very efficient for sure so this is this is the basic idea behind what is a design pattern so in react it is mostly to solve an issue regarding rendering and passing props with ease so for sure in react since it's all related to components and rendering and props so all of that is going to be having a design pattern concerning one of these issues and how to pass in props from one component to another or how to exactly render uh, multiple components or for sure how to like create a new uh, components from an old components while conserving the same logic and so on and so forth. Like proof of things that you can talk about on how what, or exactly what is design pattern. So that's basically what a design pattern and it's actually the uh, main instruction about design patterns and how they work and of course the main idea behind it. So we start off with the first design patterns. So we're just gonna discuss two design patterns today in this video tutorial particularly. And the first, or sorry, this the, the first design pattern and the most important one uh, for me at least because it's being used by a lot of libraries like commonly known uh, libraries like uh, React Rivers and so on and so forth or Redux Connect. So it is the render prop. So the term render prop refers to a technique for sharing code between React components using a prop whose value is a function. So this actually adopted from the React docs. And uh, the basic idea behind render prop it allows you actually to um, have like a component that takes a function as its child or as its children and provides throughout this function a props. So this function is gonna have a props from inside of the parent component. So we can use this props, these values uh, to render the child component. So this actually can be really, really important if you need something like a form. Uh, for example, you need like a mouse component, so on and so forth. So we're gonna see an example in here how it actually works. So for components that needs to share states with all the encapsulated components without creating a different component. It's just as basic as this. It might seem a little bit, um, I don't know, hard to understand at first or you know confusing, but we're just gonna take a look on an example here. So we got a form wrapper components, and it's actually just a simple uh, form uh, components in here, which is a function form, it takes props. And here we got like a use state, which is uh, a, like a local state, and for sure it's using a hook, so we do got values and set values, and those values are actually concerning the form input value. So each input is gonna have a value inside of here, and it's gonna be stored inside of the states, and of course manage it uh, upon that. So um, for the rendering process, we got return, we got form on submit, and we got handle submit. So whenever we submit the form, we got handle submit first, and for sure we got some like, you know, uh, a handle change handler function in there, which we don't care about in this. And eventually we got the props.children. So whenever the children of the form, we're gonna just be rendering there and we can use this children. And the, the other obvious thing, the handle submit, what it does, it first runs on submit, which is 
which basically comes from the props. So we provide this throughout the props through uh, the form components. And obviously we can just do like to do, clear the form after submit or anything. And it can do uh, a lot of things. But the main idea here is just passing the value. So the values are a critical uh, data in our uh, components in here. So the form has to always provide values. You can extend this by, I don't know, if providing like validation objects or error objects, so on and so forth. But for this case, we're just going to be providing the uh, values object. So the values object is going to contain all the inputs values. So we can just pass it to the on submit. Then later on, the user that passes the on submit handler to the form throughout the props is going to have in this values. And of course, going to work with this. So for example, he can submit this into his own API, save it to the API, and so on and so forth. So that's basically how it works. But the other idea is behind this is if we take a look on this example. Uh, so we're going back. So in this example, we got without the render props. So this one, this is the uh, traditional guy or the traditional React developer who doesn't know about render props at all. So he's going to do it. He's going to import form from the form for sure. Uh, he's going to have like return diff. So the rendering process here is going to turn a diff first. You're going to do please fill in the form, and for sure it's going to return form. So we got form import group. And this is the input group where it just groups like uh, a bunch of inputs or an input label. So a label who got a username and the most crucial part in here is just using the input. So we got input and we're going to provide a value. So it's going to be control of input. So we're going to provide the value in here. But suddenly we can't get the value for sure because the form in here has an encapsulated state called values. But we can't get this encapsulated state from the val or from basically the form components out to use it with the input components and that's the main issue that the render prop is actually going to solve for us uh, in this particular case so the input components in here can't get actually the values out of the form unless we use the render prop because we also need the values in here as we also need it on the submit function that takes the values we also need it to provide it to the input value that's the specific value is going to, of course, going to be uh, the username value. And of course, you're going to have that over there as a control node. So that's mainly the issue they're going to provide. And the render prop comes in um, all the way around and to basically fix this issue in particular. So how we can use render props to solve the issue and make it look much better. And of course, get the state out of the form components. Uh, the encapsulated state, of course, to use it with the child components. So likely we can use render props. Now we go back into the form and we change just a slightly, um, like a couple of lines of code to make it like use the render prop pattern. And what I mean by the render prop pattern, what it does, it just basically instead of just passing props.children or rendering props.children, the children in this case is going to become a function. And inside of the function, we're going to pass in an object that holds the values. This object is basically going to represent the props we're going to pass in down to the children. So that's why it's called render props or in other scenarios, you might find it like um, a child, child uh, or functional child children or anything like that um, or children function or anything, something like this. Something similar to that, but the main idea behind this is just passing the props to children as a function and passing the values um, as an object, of course, which represents the props in this case as a parameter. So later on, when we call it from uh, when we render it, of course, and we try to pass in the children, the children are going to take a function that's going to have the values or the props. As, as a props, of course, or the values of the current form as a props, then we can use it to render up the children. So we can do that really quick in here. So it gets form and for sure we got input group. But before that, we got this, um, you know, callback thing or this function, which basically a normal function that takes an argument. And we're going to use the ES6 destructor to destruct that so we get out of it the values. And for sure, we're going to just be rendering our uh, children normally without any issues and likely in here what we can do is actually access values dot username now we can access the username value we can pass into the input and voila we are ready actually and we are actually good to go with our input so that's basically the main idea behind render prop and how they work so they are pretty simple pretty straight to the point and yeah hopefully you actually like them so that's all about the render props there are actually a couple of other things you can pass in where you can use actually the render prop uh, pattern with 
like a props, not with the children or with a normal prop, like you call it a render prop or uh, anything uh, prop or anything like that. But in this case, or in this particular scenario, we use it as a children, so it means all the children pass in a callback function, we get the props, and finally, we render up the input. So simple as that, that's how the render prop exactly works. Now, the next interesting prop or design pattern we're gonna discuss in this video tutorial is actually the hook, or what it is, React Higher Order Component. So the hook is for reusing components logics, and basically, they are actually a pattern that emerges from React's uh, composition or nader. And that's, of course, uh, for sure from the React docs. So the basic idea behind hook or higher order components is actually you provide a wrapped component, which is your uh, native component, and you pass it to this function. This function is going to do some transformation through this component, and for sure, you're going to return a brand new component with uh, a specific logic that's going to be applied only by this function. And this logic it can be applied to any component for sure. And that's why it's called higher order components because it becomes, uh, it comes in, it comes in high level. You pass it in a component and returns a brand new component with all the logic that this function actually takes care of uh, applied to this particular component. And of course, you could render up these components uh, normally as we you would do with any other React components. So that's basically how hook or higher order components basically works uh, in a nutshell for sure, but uh, it has some work to be done uh, behind the scenes. So here we got a clickable button component, which is you know a component that is uh, clickable. You can take it as a button, you can click, and of course you can have feedback on an on click on something like this. So we got this clickable button, uh, we got return button on a click, and of course you're gonna get props on a click, and for sure just providing a text prop just to render up the text of the button eventually. So that's basically what the clickable components, of course, does. It just provides a button and then we'll click uh, functionally. Now let's say what we wanna do is actually take this clickable button and we wanna make it toggable. But we don't want just to make this button toggable. We wanna make anything toggable, like a div, any other components that has uh, you know, a specific element. We can just take this component and apply the toggable hook to it to make it you know, to apply or to give it the toggable logic so it can be toggle lock whenever we clock it sorry whenever we click it uh, we're gonna have this toggle in between two states like the show or a high state or anything like this so how we can do that exactly so that's where hooks comes in so you don't have to reuse the logic every single time to create a brand new component with this toggable uh, logic and so on and so forth to apply all of the available components on your stack uh, instead, you create a hook or higher order component and you simply gonna do the job perfectly. So it's just a simple function. So you can export it a function and basically most of the times it's called like make and the name of the hook because that's how hooks actually are, uh, are named, but you can name it whatever you like. So just like a naming convention, this is what you need to follow up. And it takes a component and the parameters in there or the arguments going to be passed in is always is going to be a component so the native component as you have seen before and uh, eventually what it does so it's going to do a return a new component so it always returns a brand new component and most cases it's going to return a class that extends from the components for sure and this one we can have like a state and this the inner state we're going to be using to toggle up between the show and the high states uh, both of these states so we're gonna have this dot states and show false by default and we got the toggle this dot toggle dot bind for sure and we got the toggle function in here which just takes uh, set states it grabs the previous state and for sure it does uh, previous states dot show so every single time it toggles between true and false uh, of, of the show uh, state variables so it just like toggles between both of these states and uh, the eventual thing or the main important part is actually of course is rendering we got dev we got clickable and in this case we got always uh, the clickable components and for this clickable components we're just gonna have the primary clickable component that is passed through the arguments so we do clickable we're gonna pass it whatever props we got from these components because for sure we want to pass it like a text or anything if you're using TypeScript or something like this or a typing system like flow um, you can you know you know have some interfaces in here to or typed uh, literals to make it look much better and of course for error checking 
and we got the on click we're going to be passing this dot toggle so whenever we click it we're going to toggle between this state and the other and eventually we're just going to do if this dot state dot show is actually valid and true we're going to render up the children so we're going to do and this dot props dot children which means just like an if a statement if it is true render up the children otherwise don't render it and render on all at this point so this one is what it does this clickable is going to be toggable and it's going to show us the children so whenever we click the button we first going to show up the children like allow the children to be rendered if we click it again since it's toggable so we're going to hide the children completely and we're not going to be able to see that and to clear this in here using hook or higher order components that is super simple we got this function that transforms this components we give it whenever clickable components we give it is you're going to return a brand new clickable component with the logic applied and of course it's going to be toggable so how cool is that it's pretty simple and of course this is an advanced technique you use it in um you know a lot of libraries uh, online and of course throughout the react ecosystem like redox uh it's been used quite a lot of course like everywhere so whenever you find this design pattern you should actually understand how it works and it's pretty pretty simple now from all i know uh no sorry from now on you can basically create your own hooks and for sure you can apply whatever logic you would like to to your react components so that was actually guys uh, pretty simple pretty self-explanatory explanation if you would like this design parents you can provide more design parents and that that's it so thank you guys for watching i read with you guys and for sure thanks for your time so more design patterns are on the way if you would like to just press that like button let me know in the comments i would appreciate giving you more uh, details about more specific design patterns and how they work so i would love to so thank you guys for watching i said again hopefully guys you've enjoyed it push that like button uh don't forget to enable the notifications why not and subscribe for sure so or if you like it you can share it throughout twitter facebook whatever uh, social media you would like so thank you guys for watching i've said again hopefully you guys will like it and see you guys in the next one adios